Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So, uh, we are looking at uh, method of characteristics approach to solve uh, supersonic flow field uh, problems in case of invisible derotational isentropic flows. Okay. Uh, so, and in the previous classes we discussed what these uh, characteristic lines are and how do you get uh, the characteristic equations and uh, compatibility conditions for a 2D uh, supersonic flow. Uh, the characteristic lines are C minus and C plus. The slopes of the characteristic lines dy by dx is tan of minus mu, where mu is the Mach angle for C minus characteristic and tan of theta plus mu for C plus characteristic. Along the characteristic uh, lines, uh, theta minus mu uh, that is uh, the Prandtl Mayer angle uh, theta for the C minus it is theta plus mu that is constant for C plus it is theta minus mu. So, these are given values k minus and k plus these are constant and we also had an introduction to what is meant by contoured uh, uh, nozzle where uh, the nozzle is de designed in such a way. Uh, that um, the flow at the exit right the flow at the exit is uniform otherwise if the nozzle wall is not properly contoured then uh, these characteristics keep uh, reflecting off the walls and at the end you get a non uniform flow in order to get a uniform flow you have to design the wall in such a way that it uh, cancels the waves these Mach waves once they impinge on the wall that can be done by making the wall angle equal to the flow angle uh, at each Mach wave. Okay. So, that is what is the principle that we are going to use um, and to look at how to design such nozzles. Okay. Uh, we had a relationship for what should be the flow turn. So, now I know what should be my exit Mach number m e is known I have to give a certain flow turn. So, that the flow expands here that is the theta wall maximum that is the theta wall that I have to give um, in order to achieve a certain Mach exit and this relationship was theta wall max is equal to uh, Prandtl Mayer angle of the exit flow divided by 2. Okay. This uh, also we proved by using method of characteristic itself. So, now let us apply this uh, process for design of a minimum length nozzle for Mach 2. We will just consider 2 points because uh, you can see just for, for these 2 points we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 points need to be evaluated uh, also properties at 1. Uh, at 0 which is the originating point. Uh, we have uniform Mach 1 uh, flow at uh, uh, section 0. Uh, sometimes this is not always uh, true. Uh, you may have a certain non-uniform flow also may be present, uh, but the, the flow is supersonic. If the flow is supersonic uh, then that can be considered and you can draw a, a initial characteristic net starting at this particular point. So, that uh, uh, there are uh, methods uh, uh, detailed methods for that uh, on how to consider such situations which is uh, not in the scope of what we are discussing. We are just discussing that uh, we have an uniform flow and then we turn it by a Prandtl Mayer expansion at as a corner over here and uh, then uh, look at uh, designing a wall such that um, there will be no um, uh, wave reflections at the wall uh, therefore, at the end you will get a uniform flow. 
if this needs to be achieved uh, uh, correctly and a smooth profile needs to be uh, got then we need a large number of waves you may need to take uh, hundreds of waves in order to get a smooth profile uh, but uh, um, here for a uh, classroom case uh, we will just take two characteristics we will see the procedure so that you become familiar with it and uh, if somebody is applying this in their work then they need to actually write a uh, MOC code uh, a simple code in order to do this calculation for many many waves okay so we let's begin uh, from uh, we look at the point zero uh, so at the point zero you can see so uh, this is the point uh, zero and here uh, this flow here is uniform Mach number equal to 1 and the flow turns at point 0 by an angle uh, so Mach number equal to 1 theta equal to 0 and it turns by an angle theta wall max which is equal to nu by 2 Mach exit by 2. Now this total turn uh, can be accomplished by several set of waves in this case we are considering only two waves one the final uh, flow turn and you one at a half of that so the flow turn for say Mach number 2 uh, the theta wall maximum needed to be achieved is 13.19 degrees and that is divided into two uh, 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 angles one at 6.595 and the other one at 13.19. Uh, corresponding Prandtl-Meier functions are also 6.595 and 13.19. You uh, are using the Prandtl-Meier uh, relations here, and uh, delta theta is uh, nu2 minus nu1, but uh, Mach uh, number is 1, so nu1 is 0. Uh, therefore, uh, nu2 is equal to delta theta, or in this case since theta is also 0 initially nu 2 equal to theta 2 or basically nu 2 is theta. So, uh, the points there are two waves essentially they are uh, we are considering that uh, the half angle uh, or the half height of the nozzle at the throat is 1. So, uh, you can appropriately uh, scale this these coordinates once you get the results. Uh, now, when we do this uh, kind of solution, we are solving both for x and y as well as the flow properties at each point. Uh, it becomes very difficult to keep track uh, of these variable various quantities. Therefore, it is useful to always have a uh, table of the salt uh, when you are doing it by hand. Otherwise, uh, generally people write a code to uh, do this automatically. Now, to understand the procedure uh, we can do for a few points so that uh, this procedure becomes uh, one can use this procedure. So, uh, at point at the wave uh, which is 1 we know theta value we know nu value corresponding Mach number is 1.315 and corresponding um, mu that is uh, Mach angle is 49.48 the value of k plus and k minus is also given here uh, k plus is theta minus nu that is 0 but k minus is theta plus nu which is 13.19 and 26.38 for the two different waves now we go to point 1 now point 1 is located here uh, it is the first wave that is produced at point 0 it is going and coming to the point of a line of symmetry at point 1. So, we apply the symmetry boundary, boundary condition here uh, that is theta 1 is 0. Uh, this is a C minus characteristic. So, theta 1 my plus nu 1 is equal to 13.19 it is already known, uh, but uh, theta 1 is 0 therefore, nu 1 is 13.19 therefore corresponding mach number you can get is 1.543 and corresponding uh, uh, the uh, mach angle also you can get 40.38 now how to get the value of x and y here 
uh, here this is the x y. So, this is along x coordinate this is y coordinate. Uh, now, this is a point on line of symmetry which is at x axis. So, y is 0, but we need to find the value of x for that you write the equation for uh, this particular c minus characteristic which is uh, y 2 minus y 1 by x 2 minus x 1 is equal to or um, in this case it is y 1 minus y 0 by x 1 minus x 0 is equal to tan of uh, the average angles essentially the average angles over here average of 6.595 plus 0 by 2 49.48 plus 40.38 by 2. Uh, this uh, the coefficient here is uh, this value and you can get x 1. So, now we got x 1 here. So, we write uh, the value for 1 here x is known y is 0 theta is 0. Now, we knew we got it is 13.19 corresponding Mach number and mu are also written and the value for uh, for the value of the slope that we used. So, that we got the uh, values for x and y is also uh, given over here. Now, k plus and k minus can be determined again here. Uh, k plus now is uh, theta minus mu which is minus 13.19. Because theta is 0 and mu is 13.19. Okay. So, now we go from point 1 uh, 2.2. Now, point 2 is an interior point. So, this uh, particular problem is also a uh, description of various unit processes that we had discussed. So, uh, at point 2 we have a C plus characteristic coming from 1 and a C minus characteristic coming from uh, 0. This is the second wave from uh, 0 and uh, we know for uh, c that is this is uh, the value for k plus coming from 1 and this is uh, the value for k minus coming from 0 that is the second wave second wave from 0. So, we know these values. So, just uh, we have to solve them algebraically you have the equation for that from here we can calculate what is theta 2 and uh, nu 2 which is the prandtl meyer angle. So, theta 2 is 6.595. So, you find that this is this flow is not uniform because here the angle is 0 theta is 0, but here at point 2 it has an angle 6.595. So, the flow is deflected uh, by 6.595 degrees with respect to x, uh, x axis. Mach number has increased it has come to 1.7675 and similarly mu 2 uh, has changed. Now, we need to find uh, x 2 and y 2 uh, we write the equations of straight lines uh, between these two points. So, 0 2 and uh, 1 2 uh, we know the values for uh, 1 that is already known and we know the value for 0. We substitute those values and we get uh, the uh, numbers now uh, x 2 and um, y 2. Okay. So, now this can be again put into uh, the table. Uh, so, we can keep expanding the table now point 2 is available. So, it is slightly uh, downstream of uh, point 1 and slightly uh, above uh, the uh, line of symmetry and here the flow is having an angle of 6.595 degrees. Okay. So, now we look at the first uh, uh, we look at the first wall angle uh, if you follow this particular uh, characteristic C plus characteristic after point 2 it goes to the wall point. Now, in order to ensure that uh, there is no wall cancellation. The angle at the wall uh, should be equal to uh, the angle of the flow. The angle of flow at this particular point is uh, 6.595. So, the wall should match that. So, you get theta wall equal to theta 2 equal to 6.595. The slope here is 6.595 degrees. Okay. Uh, so, now we know the wall angle at 0 this wall angle is theta w max this is known to us 
Now, we know the wall angle at this particular point okay, that is 6.595. So, this equation is also estimated to be a straight line. So, uh, in this case these two points are far apart. So, we will get a small error here um, that is understood, but when this is really done it is done in computers and uh, several uh, waves are used uh, very large number say hundreds of waves are used. Uh, then the uh, points are very close to each other and therefore, you can uh, actually get a smooth profile. But for uh, classwork sake or the classroom sake, we will just take uh, simply uh, a fewer number of points and therefore, you just write the equation of the straight line between 0 and w 1 and 2 and w 1. We take average angles again and uh, therefore, we get uh, these two equations and, um, and the previous values are substituted here and um, in the locations for points of 2 and uh, 0 and we can get the uh, values of wall as x w 1 and y w 1. Okay. So, you are getting these numbers now. So, the, this number is away much away. So, this is about 1.4967 and uh, the location is 2.8482. So, now we can continue this approach uh, go to point 3 uh, that is a symmetry point. Now, this point is coming from the second uh, wave after it has passed through point 2. So, we have to take the uh, C minus characteristic from point 2 and let it come to point 3 uh, and here at point 3 you will find that the value of Mach number at 3 will be equal to 2 and the angle is 0. This is exactly what is uh, required and uh, consequence uh, the wall angle at W 2 should also be 0. Okay. So, that should be the case. So, that should be the end of the wave cancellation section and uh, you write the equation of c minus characteristic again um, and here y is 0. So, you can solve for this uh, starting from the point 2 and you get x 3 is uh, 1.891. Okay. Uh, so, you got uh, value of these different uh, numbers now. Uh, now, you can further go to wall point 2 at uh, wall point 2 um, the value of theta is 0. So, it is the end. So, it has become parallel to the uh, x axis. So, you get a uniform flow here Mach number is 2 Mach number is 2.0 and you can get uh, the x and y values by uh, considering the previous wall point and a straight line from there and uh, a straight line from theta 3. Uh, and the intersection of those two. And here you get y wall is 1.602. Okay, so, if you uh, if we had looked at the area ratio for Mach number equal to 2, we will find that uh, y should be uh, from uh, isentropic area ratio relations it should be 1.6875. Uh, of course, we have considered only very few uh, waves here. If we take a good number of waves, we will get a more accurate uh, solution. But even considering two waves, we have got a solution which is very close uh, to the expected values. Okay. So, uh, now by this set, so now we have completed all the different uh, things and we have got uh, the points w 1 and w 2. If you take many number of uh, waves, we can get a smooth contour. Uh, so, for people who are going to use this, uh, they need to develop a, a small code uh, to compute for large number of waves for their particular uh, problem. Uh, so, uh, I hope with this example, you get an idea of how to use uh, MOC for uh, solving supersonic flow fields. It can be used for analyzing supersonic flow fields or it can be used for designing uh, supersonic nozzles. Uh, uh, this is a particular case uh, 
where we are looking at analyzing a flow field, uh, understanding how a flow field uh, looks like uh, by knowing the initial values. This is the case of analyzing a supersonic free jet that is the jet uh, a jet from that it can be a contoured nozzle it is coming out into ambient and the initial conditions of the jet are given P naught is given 6 bar T naught is given 300 Kelvin and uh, Mach number is 2.0. Uh, so, if you calculate this at this particular exit location what would be the pressure corresponding to Mach number 2.0 it can be shown that this pressure is actually less than 1 bar. That means, this uh, nozzle is in the working in the over expanded condition as a consequence it will develop um, uh, oblique shock waves. Now, this oblique shock wave will come to the center line at center line of course, the flow has to maintain theta equal to 0 uh, condition. So, in order to uh, uh, ensure that that happens because if you consider a streamline here this streamline is deflected towards the flow, but uh, at this particular uh, region the flow has to be parallel again uh, to x axis therefore, another shock develops. As a consequence of two shocks you get region 3 which has much higher pressure. Okay. So, if you look at the center line pressure variation initially you have a pressure which is lower than ambient pressure and then suddenly the pressure will increase higher than ambient pressure in the region 2 it will be exactly ambient pressure. This is a case where we are looking at reflection of waves from a free pressure boundary and uh, we know for to achieve that always the pressure at the boundary should be uh, 1 and we find that pressure at 3 is higher as a consequence it develops expansion fans and then further you can see how pressure varies here flow is non-uniform and pressure varies in a smooth manner. So, this uh, analysis can be carried out using uh, a method of characteristics and uh, shock waves together. Uh, in regions uh, in uh, those uh, shock waves are discontinuity. So, across the shock wave there is a uh, entropy jump, but once you get into uniform regions they are isentropic. So, those regions can be still analyzed using MOC. Uh, at the shock you will have to apply the shock jump conditions. So, if you look at that so at in region 1 uh, if you find out what is the pressure by looking at nozzle uh, P 0 by P for Mach 2 you find pressure is 0 0.7668 bar. Now, region 2 has a pressure equal to P ambient equal to 1 bar. Okay. So, we know the value of P 2 by P 1 across the shock. Okay, this value is known. Since we know the pressure ratio across the shock, we know that uh, that for an oblique shock it is dependent only on the normal Mach number upstream of the shock. So, we can get M n 1 which is 1.1228. If you know the Mach number M 1 is known and M n 1 is known, we know M n 1 is uh, equal to M 1 sin beta. Therefore, you can get uh, beta. Now, m and beta is known we can get theta also. So, we get how much the flow is deflected. It is deflected by 4.824 degrees. Uh, pressure in this region is 1 bar, but uh, in order to uh, make sure that uh, the flow remains um, parallel in uh, at the line of symmetry. Uh, this uh, shock wave develops uh, between region 2 and 3. So, uh, Mach number in region 2 is 1.827. Okay, this is just by oblique shock equations you can solve for it. Now, uh, it is a symmetric flow. So, between 2 and 3 another shock forms. Uh, again you can calculate it you know Mach number in M 2 then you know what the flow deflection should be uh, it is the same 4.84 degrees. Uh, therefore, uh, you can know m and theta is known you can find out all the other uh, parameters what is uh, p 3 by p 2 and so on. So, here pressure becomes 1.287 uh, bar. Okay. So, now pressure has increased in point 3 
uh, but uh, again you require in this particular region a constant pressure uh, of uh, uh, 1 bar. So, across these2 points regions between 3 and uh, the region uh, that is represented over here uh, we will have an expansion fan and that expansion fan uh, can be solved using Prandtl-Meyer's uh, theory. Okay. Uh, here uh, Prandtl-Meyer's uh, expansion is an isentropic expansion and we need to find what is uh, stagnation pressure in region 3 P03 this can be found it is 5.982 bar uh, because of 2 shock waves uh, you see that the stagnation pressure has reduced from 6 bar is due to entropy generation in shock waves. Okay. Uh, now, this pressure uh, is higher than ambient. So, you will get an expansion you know the pressure over here which is 1 bar therefore, you know pressure across the Prandtl-Meyer expansion fan uh, and therefore, since the flow is isentropic we can calculate what should be the uh, Mach number of the final wave okay, after which uh, it again gets into uniform flow and that uh, Mach number is uh, found out. Okay, so, that Mach number is 1.83 and uh, corresponding flow deflection can be found it is 4.85 degrees. So, now this Prandtl-Meyer expansion now if you see this region it is very much similar like uh, the analysis of the supersonic nozzle that we just conducted right now. So, we will not go into all the details here, but just understand how uh, we can get the, the pressures at these points 4 and 5. Uh, the initial line so the head of the expansion fan is here and uh, head is here and tail is here. So, these are Mach waves at those particular values. So, we can consider uh, 2 different set of waves again similar to the uh, way we did for uh, supersonic nozzle we divide the total turn into 2 turns. Okay. So, uh, use these are C minus characteristics. So, you have uh, theta plus nu is constant and at the point 0.4 it is a line of symmetry point 0.4 and 5. Therefore, you get uh, uh, the value of Mach number at 4 and 5 because theta is uh, 0. Mm, if you know the value of nu phi you get m 5 uh, if you know m 5 we can calculate uh, p 5. So, uh, by this way we can continuously find out uh, this and this in turn uh, continues as a whole cycle. In fact, if you take a picture of uh, these uh, supersonic jets uh, you find these shock cells and expansion cells and shock waves and expansion waves uh, they continue for a very long uh, duration. So, this is just uh, the initial part of it we have analyzed uh, in greater detail than what we were doing using uh, one dimensional uh, theories. So, similar analysis can be carried out for under expanded jets as well. Okay. So, that can be done uh, is a very similar process can be carried out. Now, once the expansion phase reflects off the uh, constant pressure boundary we know they become compression waves and ultimately can coalesce to form a uh, shock wave which is what happens over here. Okay. So, uh, we saw now that uh, method of characteristics is a very useful technique uh, not only to uh, look at the design of contoured supersonic nozzles, but to solve uh, supersonic flows in uh, general if you can find regions where uh, flow is isentropic and uh, it is also non-uniform in general still that can be solved using uh, method of characteristic provided you know some initial conditions and you can march from that initial condition into the uh, flow field and solve the entire flow field. Here uh, unlike uh, what currently uh, we do in many cases of CFD where we have a given mesh and we try to solve the equations over the mesh here both the equations and the solutions are done uh, simultaneously. 
So, you solve the characteristic net as well as you solve the um, uh, flow properties at every uh, section as you move uh, in uh, forward direction. Okay. With this uh, we come to a close of uh, discussions on uh, uh, the flow field uh, kind of uh, uh, analysis uh, in subsonic supersonic flows. We saw two kinds of approaches one was the small perturbation theory and in uh, supersonic flow we saw method of characteristics a useful approach again. Uh, and this covers uh, majority of uh, uh, the contents that we had uh, planned uh, for uh, this particular course. Uh, uh, the intention also here is that to introduce you to several special topics in uh, that we find in uh, compressible flows, uh, very many interesting uh, facts uh, or uh, very interesting flow features are um, present. Uh, but it is not possible to cover all of them in a short course, um, they are full courses in themselves. But uh, uh, a brief idea can be presented of specific topics uh, like what do you mean by hypersonic flow or uh, how does flow look like in uh, real cases where there is viscous effects uh, along the walls which forms boundary layers and there are also shock waves in supersonic flows, how do they interact with each other. And we have talked about uh, reflection of shock waves, but uh, often we sometimes find for example, even in the jet problem uh, that uh, two shock waves uh, interact with each other. Uh, those are shock shock interactions and these are very much present in uh, all uh, practical applications of uh, uh, compressible flows. Uh, so, we will just introduce these uh, topics uh, towards the end of this course uh, in the subsequent classes. Uh, so, that people interested in them can take them uh, and learn more uh, from other uh, references. With that we uh, close this uh, class, thank you.